Mr. Bodash, you have had some really exceptional experiences in the course of your life. Would you tell me how it all began? Yes, my experiences began at a very young age. I was between nine and ten years old at the time, and I had a classmate whose name was Helmut, and he was very aggressive, well, even almost criminal. This classmate accused me of a crime, but I definitely could not have committed it because I was sick at home with scarlet fever at the time. When I came home from playing one day and entered my room, this helmet was standing in a corner of the room. And at first I was very angry with my mother for her letting this classmate into my room. And so accordingly, gruffly, I asked him, what are you doing here? What do you want? He then talked to me first about my toys and he didn't let me get a word in edgewise either. And he then said, I would like to apologize to you. I was very unfair. I was spiteful and I'm sorry for that. But I'll make sure no one ever hurts you again. And at the moment he said this, he was gone. The whole thing, of course, irritated me a lot. What was this all about? Although I didn't attach much importance to it, because at the age of nine or ten, you don't think about something like that very much. And the next morning I went to school as usual, and when we all were sitting in the classroom, our teacher came in together with the school director both very serious, informing us that the said Helmut had died in a fatal accident yesterday. Whereupon I then said, what a thing, he was with me yesterday afternoon. The school director answered me, that definitely cannot be, because Helmut had his fatal accident with his bike after school on his way home. This was my first exceptional experience in this retrospect that I was very much concerned about. And when you saw Helmut in your room, how was he dressed? Was there anything striking about it? No, there was nothing conspicuous at all. He was wearing exactly the clothes that were customary at the time. So it wasn't anything that you might have said, there's something weird or there was somehow something extraordinary. The only extraordinary thing was that he was gone after he spoke to me. He then was no longer to be seen. His departure was so abrupt. You still had some other experiences. Yes, there was another quite far-reaching experience for me, which actually had a lasting impact on my life. I was on vacation with my parents, and we were staying in a boarding house, my parents on the second floor and I in the basement floor. And it was at this time that I told my parents that I would like to join a monastery. Well, the next morning, I will just backtrack, as for my parents, they had no objections. But the next morning, my parents were very disturbed and asked me if I had, let me just interject, that I was Catholic. So my parents asked if I still had my rosary that they had given me for my first communion. And of course, I thought I had it, because I usually had it in my pocket, but not that particular morning. My parents insisted that I go to my room to get the rosary. So I went to my room and got the case with the rosary in it and returned to the breakfast room. And I wanted to give the rosary to my parents. So I opened the case, and can you believe it, out fell ashes. 
I was, of course, shocked at that moment, completely irritated, stunned. What was it that happened? Then my parents said to me, and this is something that also touched me very much, where were you last night? And of course, I told him where I was, in my bed, of course. My father then said, no, you weren't in your bed. You were standing in front of our bed. And in your hand, you held a burning rosary. And you said, the way I intend to go is not the right one. And just as you said that, you were gone again. Well, I now, as before, wanted to enter a monastery. But there was a quarrel with the bishop, culminating in the fact that I should either be excommunicated or just leave the church. I then decided to leave the church, but I did not abandon my connection to the divine. I still had another experience in connection with this when I once came home from school at noon. I had been given by a priest friend a complete liturgy of the hours. So my father said to me then, it smells like fire in your room, but I can't find anything. Well, I then went to my desk where there was a particularly strong smell of burning. My parents didn't open my desk, so I then opened the desk drawer, and, curiously enough, my Book of Hours was in there, amongst other documents. But it was only this book that was burned. So there was a partial, spontaneous ignition, I don't know how this happened, and nobody can explain it. If you think about it now, can you explain what caused this fire? I don't have the ultimate explanation, but it is quite certain for me that there are existences that we normally don't perceive with our senses. These are, I'll say now, beings that definitely have the opportunity to be able to intervene in the material world. I can't answer how this happens in detail. You also had some further experiences. Yes, that's right. There were some exceptional experiences in my life, and one of them was the experience with a dog. We had a poodle, and this poodle was 14 years old and became very ill. We then decided for the animal it was best to put her to sleep. My mother and I then went to the vet's office, and my mother went in with the poodle in the meantime, I was sitting in the car on the passenger seat and the car door was open. It was summer. And of course, I was in immensely sad because the dog meant a lot to me. Well, all of a sudden, lost in thought, I looked at the front door of the vet's office, suddenly seeing our dog standing in front of this door, having a good shake, and happily bounding down the stairs, running toward the car, jumping into the car, and putting his head right in my lap, as if to say, thank you for this decision. And in this case, again, just as it appeared, it was suddenly gone again. Did the dog escape from the vet's office to come to you? No, my mother was staying with it when it was put to sleep. And of course, my mother didn't know anything about what happened next because the dog was sick. It would not have been able to run that briskly at all. 
That was the striking thing. The sick dog that now suddenly was really happily jumping down the stairs like a healthy young dog. So this then was the spirit of the dog, so to speak. Yes, it had to be the spirit of the dog that became visible. Another experience was the one that I was not involved in alone, but there were several people to witness it. My father and I were visiting a friend of ours who had recently lost her husband through his transition into the world beyond. So we paid a visit to her. And when we intended to leave, my father and I wanted to use the toilet. And my father went first and everything was quite normal. And he came back and after that, I wanted to do the same. And the only problem was that we found that the door was locked. The door was locked from the inside. The key was also stuck in the lock from the inside. But there was no one in the toilet. And the toilet window was a very small one. And moreover, it was protected by a massive grating that was built in. Why the key had turned was inexplicable to us. All attempts to get the lock to open did not work. This friend then decided to call the fire brigade because the door had to be opened somehow. The fire brigade came and the firemen were just as baffled as we were by the fact that a door was locked from the inside, but apparently no one was present in that room. Despite making their best efforts, there was no other choice for them but to break open the door, just to find that the window grill was undamaged and the window was intact and that there was no one in the room. Interestingly, this friend later told us that she had seen her husband, who was in fact dead, walking through the apartment several times. Another very moving experience is again one that I did not experience alone, but also together with my parents and other people. I had agreed with my father that I should surprise my parents with my visit at a certain place where they frequently visited at special times. So I wanted to make my mother happy that way just by surprising her by being there. And my father and I arranged everything, how to plan the trip and then the meeting place. Unfortunately, the weather gods did not cooperate because I was surprised by a very strong thunderstorm. I was almost there, even though just at the edge of this place, and I discovered an open garage. And I thought to myself, well, in view of this thunderstorm, people will surely understand when I take refuge here at the entrance to the garage, waiting for the thunderstorm to pass. Well, I entered the garage, and I immediately heard the voice of an elderly gentleman addressing me in a very friendly way. Oh, just come on in. It's a short thunderstorm. It won't do any harm. And take your jacket off because you'll be all wet underneath. That was true. But the moment he said it, I did not attach any importance to it because my thoughts were all about my parents who were close to a lake. And for that reason, in view of the thunderstorm, were now more or less endangered. But it was true, I also had got wet underneath this summer jacket. We were nicely chatting about trivial matters, and after about a quarter hour, the thunderstorm was indeed over, and I was able to continue on my way. I said, 
goodbye to the nice gentleman and went in the direction of the meeting point with my parents. But I thought, well, my parents will probably have moved on because in view of this thunderstorm, how otherwise is that supposed to work at all? At that time, there weren't any mobile phones, or rather, we didn't yet have one. But my parents were still at the agreed meeting place, and this was something that surprised me a bit. But my father said, Oh, that wasn't a problem. When the thunderstorm started, a young man came along and told us to wait here, and that the thunderstorm would stop soon and that no damage would occur. And then he said to me, that is, to my father, your son will soon come. My mother didn't hear that because by that time, my mother was already quite hard of hearing. So we had met and my mother was so pleased. And at some point we said farewell and I had to go back just exactly the same way I had come. And I thought to myself, oh, the nice gentleman was so friendly. There you go thanking him once again and still wishing him a nice Sunday. So I passed this garage, and this time the garage was locked, and I decided to just go to the house and ring the front doorbell. But no one in the house opened the door for me. Instead, the door on the opposite side opened, and a neighbor answered, and quite sternly he asked me, what are you doing there? So I replied, I would like to thank the gentleman who lives here. Whereupon the neighbor said, There is no gentleman here. There's only a mother and daughter living here. I tried to make him understand that there was a thunderstorm earlier. He agreed and that the garage was open. He replied that the garage could not have been open because the mother and daughter were on vacation. I described the type of car to him in detail. The neighbor now became unsure. I described to him the person with whom I had spoken. The neighbor became even more uncertain. I then asked him where this gentleman had come from. So the neighbor replied, Where he came from, I do not know. But the person you describe existed he was this woman's husband, but he has been dead for 10 years now. You had another exceptional experience just two years ago. Yes, for me these were difficult experiences. They affected me personally. Looking back, they were very beautiful, although quite sad. It was 2019 in October. And I heard a voice inside me saying, Next year, your father will die. This seemed a bit unlikely to me at that moment, because even though my father was 86 years old, he was in quite good health. And even at this age, he took no medicines of any sort. He had no difficulties, no problems, no illnesses, nothing. However, this voice was so strong and clear that I found it all a bit unsettling. And at first I thought, well, maybe there will be an accident. My father, in fact, became ill all of a sudden in March, and he was bedridden. He also had to have nursing care. And a nursing service came, and the nurses told me that my father had a strong edema, that is, water retention, inside the body, and that he had to be taken to hospital. He was brought to the hospital, and at first, everything looked as if he was going to be okay, and that everything would be fine. Then, one evening, that was about the 12th to 13th of March, around 11.30 p.m., the phone rang, 
and it was the hospital asking me to come immediately to see my father. My dog is my companion because of my eye, eye problems, so I could not leave him alone in the apartment all night. But the doctor on duty then said, that's no problem at all, you can bring the dog with you. So I took my dog with me. The interesting thing was, when I came into the hospital room with the dog, the dog immediately hid in the farthest corner of the hospital room, and this was absolutely unusual. My father was very restless. However, shortly after I arrived, he became quite calm. I was sitting the whole night next to my father, holding his hand, and at about five o'clock in the morning, I suddenly got very tired. And I was awakened by a very strong light. So I came back to myself again, that is, I woke up. My first thought was that the night nurse was in the room and had turned the light on, but that was not the case. And immediately when I perceived this light, an unspeakable calm came over me, the feeling of a wonderful peace, and I no longer had any fears. And my father, whose hand I was still holding, then squeezed my hand two times vigorously, but it was just only a handshake, and then he stopped breathing. And at the moment my father stopped breathing, I perceived in this light, I describe it as I feel, a large, kind of wrought iron gate a very huge gate that was opened by two beings of light that I could not precisely recognize. And I saw my father walking along this path. He walked through this gate and didn't look back. My first thought was, I want to go after my father. I want to go with him. The gate closed. Whereupon I heard a voice inside me saying, Your time has not yet come. Only at that moment, after those impressions were gone, that I realized, Your father is not breathing anymore, he has died. Mr. Bodash, what impact did all these experiences have on your worldview? All in all, this has had many very positive effects for me. On the one hand, it has made me very critical of denominational dogmas. It has taken away my fear of what we call death. It has actually revealed to me that there is certainly and definitely more than just this material earth where we find ourselves right now. If I were asked today how I would define the path of life, I would not say it's like a straight line with a starting point, that is birth, and an ending point that is death. Rather, I would say, life is an ellipse. The first point of intersection is birth, with birth representing death from the spiritual realm. And at the end of the elliptical path, the second point of intersection, there is what we call death, and this means the birth into the spiritual life. 
das, was wir als Tod bezeichnen, because there is a spiritual life, there is continuance. And what we call soul, spirit, personality, all of this is the eternal. There will always be comings and goings in life's most diverse forms. Mr. Bodash, I thank you very much for the interview.